Next question is from Noah Wilmot 97. What were the hardest obstacles for you to overcome during your fitness journey? Ooh. Hardest obstacle. Mine, yeah. mine is what we j- I just I mean not just, it's been a while now. The the back to back of the low testosterone. So coming off of testosterone after being on uh higher doses like when I was competing, right? So <clears throat> coming off of that to none and obviously I worked my way down, but once I got to a place where I was taking none, um, that coupled with tearing my Achilles right after that. Double wing. Oh, man, it was it was already hard, right? And I knew it was going to be hard. I knew it was going to be difficult. Uh, I knew I was going to have low testosterone levels. I knew I, I was going to lose my strength. I was going to lose lots of muscle. I was going to lose the drive to even get to the gym. And so I was already thinking about that, going, okay, Adam, you just need to – Stay active. Think of the things that you love to do, like basketball. Integrate that into your fitness so that it keeps you consistent with working out and exercise. And then you'll get back to feeling stronger as your hormone levels come up. And then sure as shit, I'm like two weeks into playing basketball and I tear my Achilles. So now I'm dealing with hormone level, uh, uh, testosterone levels being extremely low. And then on top of that, having a torn Achilles, that had to have been the worst storm that I ever had to weather. I mean, that's the closest I've probably been to depression since probably mm. back in my house days, like 2012 or whatever that was. Yeah. There's no, there's no doubt that if you're really into working out and fitness, making the transition from, I love this because I'm getting strong. I love this because I'm you know, able to lift more weight. I look better. I'm chiseled. You know, this is great. Like that to, if you work out long enough at some point, you're going to encounter something like what Adam did or what I did where at one point uh, I had severe digestive issues, thought I had an auto, autoimmune disease. I, it turns out I didn't, but I thought I did. And you have to make the transition from training for strength, training for aesthetics to I exercise now is just to maintain my health. That is a hard, Mm -hmm. that is a very hard transition that all of you listening are going to have to go through if you stay consistent long enough. You stay consistent with your fitness long enough. If you're young right now, you're probably, you know, motivated. You just love, you're, you're getting stronger. You're faster. I feel good. Everything works good. This is great. And at some point, whether it's a family issue, job issue, health issue, injury, something is going to, you know, there's going to be a wrench that's going to be thrown into that machinery and you're going to have to develop a brand new relationship with exercise or stop altogether. Mm -hmm. Some people never go back. Some people get injured, get off testosterone like Adam did. And I know guys like this, they were all juiced up in their twenties, had to go off and just stop lifting weights because they just, their, their relationship with exercise was purely to build muscle and look amazing. And once they had no testosterone, well, you ain't going to train the same. You ain't going to get the same benefits and results. So they just like, screw it. I don't want to do it anymore. Um, that's a very hard obstacle. I had to do it myself. I, I had to completely shift from training for aesthetics and performance to training for health. It was extremely difficult. I, I was almost forced to make that transition. It took me a year to really start to develop that relationship. But at the other end, um, I had a, I have a much more complete lifelong relationship with exercise but it's a hard that's a hard transition yeah for me it was more um that transition from being a uh, working out to then produce a better version of myself to perform on the field and, and see you know what all my work transpired to become and and also along with that you're working out with people uh, all the time next to you. And so I was like working in a team environment. I would work out. I was like the typical guy that would work out with like a workout partner, mm. you know, and like we would plan and organize our workouts like based off each other's schedules. And, uh, you know, and then once once the, the last game I played, like I, I went through this whole cycle of depression of just like I, you know, well, what what am I even going to work out for? You know, like, what what am I doing this for? Like, I just didn't have a clear vision of what that looked like anymore. It was like, it was always uh, for something. And so, um, you know, it took me a good, like, year and a half, maybe even two years of just, like, scrambling to find a, a motivating factor for me to, uh, you know, push myself. So, and then, and then later on, as I, as I got a little more uh, mature in the process, realized like, I don't need to, you, you know, hammer myself to produce the results that I want and to be healthy and to do all these things. Like I can actually feel really good 
you know, coming out of these workouts. And so anyway, it just, that was a really, really tough transition for me because it just wasn't clear. I didn't have a vision of what that looked like. Many times it's, we need to just change the goal, right? So, you know, we're, it's really common that when you get into working out, you're heavily focused on the way you look or, you know, losing pounds on the scale, you know, or big, getting bigger muscles. And so there, we, we tend to have these very superficial type of goals. It's just, it's just how we all operate. We're, we're driven by insecurities. We're uh, visual creatures. And so a lot of times that's what gets us initially motivated to come in the gym. And eventually that, that does, like Sal said, you, you will be faced with that one day. And when you do, if you're still hung up on that goal, like if I was still hung up on what, how do I still build as much muscle as I was when I was doing steroids or can I get at least close to that or I still want to look awesome, you know, if I was so hung up on that goal during that time, I, I definitely would have fell into depression and never came back to, to working out. But I just had to, I had to reframe what my new goal is and, you know, the give the the spiritual side of me right so i know anybody who's who's non-spiritual this will this will bug them or whatever so we reverse or take out god and put universe for whatever reason you know crystal yeah, crystal yeah chris yeah whatever yeah, yeah. whatever makes you feel better <laughs> but for me i always felt like i, I always i always mother I, am. I always feel like when i i feel so strongly about something that i want uh, God always has this funny way of slapping me in the face and being like, "This isn't this isn't your plan. This is my plan." And I, I, and I'm always reminded of that when I have things like this. Like, and for me, I said that when that happened to me, testosterone wise, I shifted over. Like, okay, this is how I'm going to handle it. And then all of a sudden, I tear my Achilles. That to me is that wake up call. It's like, okay, Adam, you're you're looking in the wrong areas of your life. This isn't where you're supposed to be focused. And so, whatever you want to believe in, I think that. We get revealed things like this all the time in our life. And if you're struggling right now and you constantly keep trying to force towards a certain direction, maybe you're going the wrong direction. And maybe there's something else that you should be focusing on and reframing and changing your goal. You know what's interesting about this, right? You have three uh, guys who have made fitness their life, who's been, who've all been working out for decades, right? Relatively or extremely consistently and all of our answers there was a common theme it, although different circumstances the theme was developing a new relationship with exercise from the one i started with that was the hardest obstacle yeah it's not the injury that was the hard obstacle for adam it's not the that i got sick the hard obstacle or that that justin stopped playing sports it's that what is exercise what does fitness mean to me now and it's funny it reminds me of there's a certain type of client that is the most likely to hire a personal trainer, but also simultaneously the most likely to stop after a short period of time. That's the client that comes in and wants to get in shape for a specific date or an event. If somebody comes in to hire you and says, I want to get in shape for Vegas. I want to get in shape for my wedding. I want to get in shape for whatever. Mm -hmm. As a trainer, I knew the odds are going to hire me are very high. This is like a no, pro they're going to definitely buy some training for me. The challenge was keeping them going when they after they were done with that date because their relationship to exercise had a time frame it had a time limit on it a specific one whether it be you know march 37 you know the 27th not 37th yeah. doesn't exist march 27th <laughs> i'm getting married or whatever okay yeah. and after These march covid days are really blending together yeah. <laughs> totally yeah. you know oh you know i i got married on that day i'm done now my relationship to exercise either needs to change or i'm done with it right so if you want long term success your relationship to exercise is if you want long term success you're better off tying it to uh you know making myself be a better person uh working with my health working with my life circumstances that exercise to me is a way to improve myself in all aspects not just something specific like strength because that mm -hmm. can be taken from you or my body hey circumstances may change or you know i'm going to do these specific exercises that's all i do because you may get injured or it's to do great in a race because then the race ends is really to tie it something that's that's bigger than that which is general growth general overall health if you do that you're much more likely to have long-term success